Hello, this is Roland. Welcome. Today I want to continue with my series of videos about courage. I want to talk about courage. So, I've worn, worn my Western style clothing here. I grew up in Utah, you know, so I'm actually a Westerner. I was born in Wyoming. Grew up in Utah. But I wanted to tell you about what I've been reading lately and then tie it into uh, the idea of courage. See, we all need courage. Today, what do, the term that people tend to use is confidence. They want self-confidence um, and confidence in doing things. Okay? So you also hear the term self-esteem. Let's talk about confidence. But I'm, instead of using the term confidence, I'm going to use the term courage. Because that's what we all need is courage. And most of us tend to be a little bit on the wimpy side. In other words, we're because we're people pleasers. We're people pleasers and we don't often say what we ought to say. And another reason why we don't say what would be good to say, two reasons. Number one, we get angry. See, once you get angry, then it's hard to say what you want to say because it's not going to come out right. And you know it's not going to. You know the anger is going to ruin it. But if you could say what needs to be said without being angry, I'll give you a good example. good example, which you all understand, and that's the, the workplace. Let's say you're a manager, and you have an employee that uh, uh, is making mis a mistake. So what do you do? You... You talk to the employee. You offer some counseling, some coaching, some direction, some mentorship. Okay? But you, you, um, you offer constructive criticism. See, you don't shy away from it. You're not afraid of it. You just, you offer the constructive criticism. And it's not, it's not a you message like you do this or you do that. You're talking about something. About this could be done better. Okay, this is what you do well, this is what could be done better. See? So it's constructive criticism. And the employees appreciate constructive criticism. It, feedback. Okay? Constructive feedback. Because it helps them to do the job better and be better employees. Maybe get a raise. Okay? So it's done neutral it's done neutrally with an a, it's done with an attitude of friendly neutrality. Okay? See how that works? In other words, you're talking, it's, in other words, it's about improving performance. It's not an attack on the person or some global um, negativity. It's, it's for the purpose of performance improvement. Okay? All right. So, so you see how if you could, if you could use that approach throughout in, in all your life, how much easier it would be to say what you, you need to say because it, it'll help other people. Well, the problem is that in your own personal life, with your partner, with your kids, with your um, neighbor, or even standing in line at the grocery store, somebody cuts in front of you, see, you, what happens? You get angry. You immediately get angry underneath. And then it's hard to say what you need to say, which is, excuse me, I was here first. See, if you weren't angry, it'd be easy to say. So what happens is the anger makes things come out right, and then when you when you speak up with anger, it doesn't come out right. It makes it worse, and so then you become afraid of speaking up because of the anger and because it makes it worse. So then what do you do? You, you, you don't speak up at all because you're afraid to, so you suppress. But what does suppression do? It increases the, the anger underneath and the resentment underneath, see? And it makes it even harder to speak up. See, a lot of uh, husbands are that way, a lot of dads. There are some things that ought to be pointed out, see, some constructive criticism, some feedback, but he doesn't say anything. He just sits in the living room, watches sports, goes out to the garage and works, and doesn't say anything. It becomes like a non-factor. You know what it is a lot of times? A lot of times it, it boils down to the fact that he's angry. And when he says something, it doesn't come out right. And then he reacts to their reaction to what he says 
see, and eventually he becomes a suppressed wimp. See, you, you'd have a great big football player, 280 pounds and six foot six inches tall, and he could be a, a complete repressed wimp around the house because of, see, not wanting to speak up because of the anger. You see how that works? Or afraid of what he'll do when he gets angry. See, people are afraid of their own anger. So you see, if you didn't get angry, you see how much better off you would be. Then you could speak up. Be better for you, better for everyone else. Okay? So there's a little introduction right there to, to, uh, to the topic. That's why I have the meditation. The little meditation helps you to stand back from thoughts and emotions and stand back from um, circumstances too. Just stand, take a step back, a mental step back. Get the big picture. Okay, and then see what the situation is. And then, in, from the neutral, from the point of, of calm neutrality, then you can say or do what is needed, or maybe nothing is needed. Nothing needs to be said. Okay? But when you get emotionally in, pulled into the emotions, you get pulled into the emotions, you're pulled into the situation. See, then you're no longer objective. Now you're subjective. See how that works? All right. So the meditation is helpful, so you just give it a try. Now I got my Western garb here, I got my hat, and I got my, um, and I got a, a book. Oh, I wanted to tell you about what I've been reading lately. I never have gotten to it yet. Um, lately, here's what happened. I went on a nice three-week um, vacation. While I was on vacation, I went to the local library there where I was, and last summer, I had read a Western novel by Zane Gray. He's a famous uh, Western um, novel writer, Zane Gray. Okay? And I read one, I think it was called The Rainbow Bridge. It was a wonderful story, wonderful novel. I enjoyed it thoroughly. So this, then I didn't read another one for a whole year. But then this summer on vacation, I thought, well, maybe I'll read another one. So I went to the library shelf. And I was looking for Zane Gray, but I accidentally um, picked up a Western by Louis Lemour. And some of you already know who he is. He was, he wrote more, he was the greatest Western novelist there ever was. New York Times bestseller, he won a, a congressional award, a presidential award, I think. Just a great writer, wrote great stories. So I accidentally picked up one of his, and I read it, and it was good. I read it in about maybe four days or something. I got another one, and then another one. Okay, so I want to talk about courage. So the the um, book I read a week ago was this book right here. It's called The Rustlers of West Fork. The Rustlers of West Fork by Louis L'Amour. There's his picture on the back. There he is. Okay. Great story. Okay. Here's another one. This one is called Writer of Lost Creek. Writer of Lost Creek, also by Louis L'Amour. Okay. Now, what's good about these? Why do I like these novels? Well, incidentally, this one here, The uh, Rustlers of West Fork. I like this one because it's about uh, Hopalong Cassidy. He wrote four Hopalong Cassidy novels. And you, some of you will remember Hopalong Cassidy. Was a tel there was a television show, Hopalong Cassidy. It was very good. It was like The Lone Ranger, okay, or Zorro, or Gunsmoke. One of those where there was a good where the, there was a good guy, Hopalong Cassidy was a good guy. Honest, fair, kind. Okay, kind to children, kind to animals, kind to everyone. Just a big good guy. But he had a no nonsense. A guy like John Wayne, a lot of, a lot of his movies. Also, in other words, he was a good guy, but. He also had a no-nonsense side. He knew what was right, and he stood for what was right. Okay? 
and he he didn't vacillate. He didn't doubt what was right. He knew what was right. And when he saw what was wrong, then he stood for what was right. Okay? So that's what the Hopalong Cassidy character was like. So in this novel here, The Wrestlers of Westport, it's a wonderful. I recommend that you get it. It's a, very, it's a wonderful story. And the good guys, so it's a typical Western. There's bad guys. But you know what? In real life, there are bad guys. Okay? And they're good guys. Okay? And now the, the trouble with a lot of you men, you uh, husbands, you fathers, is that you're not good enough. See? You're kind of like sort of good, a little bit good. You pay lip service. But even there, you don't even know what's, what's good, what's right sometimes. You yourself are not right. Use bad language, smoke marijuana, look at naughty things, stand around when people are telling some off-color joke, you sheepishly smile, see, or go along with it, see, and you're confused about what's right. And then you don't stand for what's right because you're confused and also you're suppressed, confused and suppressed, see. Well, that's not good. That's not what your wife and your kids need from you. They need you to stand for something. Okay? Stand for what's right. But with a twinkle in your eye. So that's one good thing about this, these stories. But another good thing about these stories is that Mr. Lamour had a, had a, had a, good, um, had a good idea. Had knew, understood quite a bit about human nature. For example, he frequently talks about how Hopalong Cassidy um, would have intuition about something. He used the term instinct. He, mean, he meant intuition, a hunch, a sense. See, he trusted his hunches, trusted his, what he kind of wordlessly knew. It's very important. It's very, very important. Another thing Hopalong Cassidy did, which made him effective, is that he moved in his own time and space. He didn't react, see? If something had to be done, he just went and did it. He didn't wait to react, see? And then when he had to face a bad guy, he surprised the bad guy, see? He did, he did things on his own terms. He moved, he was in his own time and space. That's very important. Because as soon as you react, react you're the loser, see? So Louis L'Amour, the author, he understood that. And he showed that in his characters. So you, you trust your intuition. You stand for something. You stand for what's right. Okay, you move in your own time and space. Okay. And you, you, live, you walk the walk. See, you don't fraternize with uh, the enemy. There's a lot of that going on nowadays. People who are not living properly. See, you just kind of act like it's okay. Well, it's not okay. So you have to set a good example. Sometimes a man has to stand alone, or a woman. You have to stand alone. If you, you stand for what's right, alone. See? And father, you have to stand for what's right. And you can't have any vices. Okay? So you read these these novels, especially the Hopalong Cassidy. They're real, they're very nice. Okay. Um, there's nothing untoward in them. No bad language. Um, Hopalong Cassidy doesn't do anything that's not proper. And in, in the end, he wins. The bad guys lose. That's the way it's supposed to be. Okay. So this is um, um, my uh, I I gave you a few clues in this little lecture about courage, how to have courage. See how it's connected with, with knowing what's right and trusting and knowing what's right. Okay? Well, that's, um, that's, that's, that's part of faith. See? And then the other thing is you, um, you love what's right. You love what's good. Okay? And you know what's right. And then you stand for what's right. That also takes faith. And you move in your own time and space. That also 
is an, is an aspect of, uh, of, of faith. See? So, hope you enjoyed this little uh, talk, and I'll see you again next time.